G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today we're going to do another power rankings. I used to do these like every three or four weeks. I thought while I'm away, these videos are kind of easy for me to knock up and it's still interesting and a way to cover what's happening across the league, generally speaking. So these power rankings are about, you know, trying to capture form lines and try and almost give us like a real ladder on based on who we rate. And I, again, this was, this was a particularly hard week to do it, I think, because there were a number of results that sort of didn't go as expected and trying to quantify how much to say, you know, knock down a Carlton who lost to Adelaide or rise up an Essendon who unexpectedly beat the Bulldogs and, and try and be consistent is a little bit tricky, but I'm going to have a crack anyway, so we're going to race through it. Before I get into it, if you could do me a favor and consider subscribing to the channel to help it grow, that'd be much appreciated. Okay, so I've had some feedback that we like to see it from the bottom up, and uh, therefore I'm going to start with the bottom four, and I'll segment this as a, as a clear bottom four, and I'm going to put them in red. And uh, these are bottom four contenders and probably not realistic finals chances. That's probably the way I would color coordinate it. So let's get these four up in this order. So from the bottom, I've got the two winless sides in North and Hawthorne at the bottom too. And they happen to be playing each other this week. So this will be revealing. And Hawthorne's only ahead of North. Because on reflection, I think they've probably had flashes where they looked a little bit better. But it's hard to split. You can flip a coin between these two sides in terms of how to split them on this year's form. Both of them have had flashes of looking like they've improved and then, you know, looked a little bit lackluster, which is expected for young sides, to be honest. But Hawthorne were a better side last year. That's probably the only reason I've got it this way. I realize it's probably a little bit inconsistent with last week. I did have, I think I had it the other way around. I think I had North higher. But but, you know, there's got to be some flexibility for me to change my mind. If I never change my mind, then it gets too rigid, and I think Hawthorne's probably a shade better. But they play each other this week, and funnily enough, I've tipped North, but I think Hawthorne probably have the higher ranking. So anyway, moving on from that, I've got West Coast leapfrogging them, obviously off the back of a, of an improved fortnight, and then a good win over Richmond, while obviously Richmond are depleted, but West Coast did put some distance between them and their opposition, and, and clearly just looking a little bit better on current form. This is only about current form. So I've got West Coast as the next worst, if you like. And then I've got Richmond sliding into the bottom four. Now, again, mitigating circumstances with them, I really don't think they'd be as bad as they are in this ranking had they not had a ridiculous amount of injuries. And uh, like I said, I've got a bit of compassion for the Tigers, a little bit, uh, at being an Eagles fan. I do think this will be an opportunity for them, you know, to, to really test out the lower regions of the list that has been underexposed. And I did sort of forecast, I thought, oh, geez, Richmond will be vulnerable this year if they cop injuries. The injuries have been worse than I expected, and I think they've held up okay. So I'm not putting them any lower than this as it currently stands. But there's some adversity there. I don't think they're a finals contender, hence why they qualify in my red zone of teams that are not realistic finals contenders. So then we get a bunch, uh, we'll group the next four together. And I'm not putting these guys in red. I don't know if I have any of them in my eight but I'm also not willing to completely rule them out either. So you've got the Adelaide Crows, the Gold Coast Suns, the Western Bulldogs, and Essendon. Splitting these teams is so difficult. It really is. There's been a mixed bag of form, so stay with me. The Crows move out, out of the bottom four with a really good win over Carlton. Now, it is only one win, so they don't move up meaningfully. I mean, they lost to the Gold Coast Suns. They do play Essendon this week, which we'll be revealing again. We don't know if this one win, where they look pretty damn good, is a sign of things to come. Have they snapped out of it like the Brisbane Lions appear to have as well? Or is it just one response, like we saw West Coast last year, not to compare those two sides, but West Coast would sort of come up and have one response and, and have an amazing game and then sort of fluctuate again. Remains to be seen, but on current form, that's about as good as it gets. Then the Gold Coast Suns, again, I've got them lower. Well, they lost by eight goals to the Western Bulldogs, um, who I have higher than them as well. And the Bulldogs probably only had one horrific game. So they lost to the Ds in round one by 45 points. They're one of the best teams in the comp still. They beat the Suns significantly. They beat the Eagles significantly. And then they got very close to beating the Cats. And if you rate the Cats as a good side, you have to think, you have to consider that a reasonably good result given the state of things. It's just that Essendon performance where they look particularly lackluster. So I'm not willing to overreact and drop them down too much. And then Essendon have earned a, a boost up ahead of the Western Bulldogs. The easiest case to make is that they just, you know, beat them fairly convincingly. But they are three and two. They've got wins over St Kilda, Hawthorne, and the Bulldogs. They were terrible against the power, no doubt. And they looked okay against Sydney. So that's why I see it. I think Essendon is trending up. But again, there is a little bit of a lack of trust with Essendon, which is why at three and two, they still sit below some of the other teams that have got two and three. So maybe that's kind of an unspoken element of these power rankings is ranking teams based on legitimacy and teams that we don't trust yet will naturally not rise up the rankings as quickly as others. So let's talk about the next block of teams. And these are the four teams I had outside the top six. So I have a clear six that I think should make finals. I mean, 
I've been wrong in the past about locking in teams for finals too early. Like I think back to round 15 last year, I, I didn't think that GWS or Carlton were finals contenders. So I'm going to stop short of saying lock them in for finals, but you never know. But these are the next four, the next best, I reckon. And I'm going to go with the Brisbane Lions, Collingwood, St Kilda, and Fremantle. Again, it's so hard to split. Like Brisbane being at the bottom of that group is still an improvement on last week. And they did have a fantastic win against the Demons. They're still making up a little bit of ground. And their only win before that was a big win over North Melbourne who are struggling at the moment. So Collingwood's got to go ahead of them because Collingwood just beat them. And then they're coming off the bye and uh, a narrow win over Hawthorne as well. So it's a bit of a mixed bag there as well. But if Collingwood has beaten Brisbane at the Gabba like a fortnight ago by a reasonable margin, then I can't really justify Brisbane leapfrogging them. But this is where it gets messy. The Saints are a tricky one, hey. Like, they've been a mixed bag over the last stretch. So there's a win over Collingwood. They lost to Essendon. They nearly lost to Richmond in a spirited effort. They had to come back and win. And to their credit, they did win. So you've got to give them some credit for that. Like, switching on like that is still a skill that they were managed to do. And then gave the Giants a really good shake, like, deep into that game away from home. So... What the hell do we make of that? So I think on balance, I've got them exactly where I had them last week. Likewise with Frio, same spot I had them last week because I think, you know, to play the power at Adelaide Oval, I actually thought there was a good chance they were going to lose that game by at least five goals, to be honest. They don't have a good track record of playing the power at Adelaide Oval. They nearly won the game. They were in a great position to win it. Port Adelaide just a little bit more clutch, you know, more experienced side. They got the job done, but I think Fremantle's fortnight, despite being two losses, I think does speak to their legitimacy to some extent. So I've still got them in the same spot. You can't move them up power rankings on that basis, um, but I've got them, you know, probably the best team out of the group vying to prove themselves as finals chances. Now let's talk about my top six, which I will reveal. So top down, I've got GWS, Sydney, Melbourne, Port Adelaide, Geelong, and Carlton. Now I think this is going to get some criticism, but I think this is harder than it may look. But again, let me know in the comments. So at Carlton sliding, they just lost to the Crows at Marvel Stadium. Now, do I think this is a real indicator of anything troubling? Not really, but it is tight at the top. Like Geelong are undefeated and Carlton's victories have been Brisbane, which seemed good at the time, but then didn't look good immediately after. They just beat Richmond, then they played North. They beat the Dockers just, but it was a tight game, and then they lost to the Crows. So that's actually not the most compelling run of form, hence why they drop a little bit. Now Geelong, 5-0. I, I did get some criticism for not having them higher. Now, equally again, their run of fixtures have not been super compelling. Like, there's, there's not a big scalp there. They beat St. Kilda at GMHBI by a goal. Decent win, absolutely. They beat the Dogs at neutral venue, Decent win, but, you know, look what the dogs did after that. So what, what exactly do you make of that? Then there's a win against the Crows, the Hawks, and then a big win over North Melbourne. So I'm unwilling to really shoot Geelong too much higher than this. They need a scalp or to consistently win while other teams are failing to really move up. So they're a beneficiary of Carlton lapsing this week, but I still don't quite have them in the top group. It doesn't mean they're not capable. As an aside, I saw um, Fox Footy's put up a graphic of like the premiership window when you're in the top six teams for scores against and the top six teams for scores for. Um, and you got Geelong and Port in that premiership window as the two best teams, but you do factor in the opposition. So I'm not going to rule out Geelong shooting up these rankings, but I'm trying to do it on evidence. And uh, I don't know if I can change too much of it from last week, given it was just a big win over North. So let's talk about the power. Now, again, they nearly lost to Fremantle. Had they not hung on to win that game, they probably would find themselves at the bottom of this top six. I'm not sure. But they, they got the win and they're steady. And why are they not higher than Melbourne who just lost to Brisbane? Well, Melbourne just beat them in Adelaide. So it's tough. I still think it's pretty razor thin between Melbourne and the power. It was one of those games when they played that the power probably should have won given their entries and opportunities, but Melbourne were a little bit more clutch. And Melbourne are also playing a Brisbane Lions with a hell of a point to prove at the moment. So I still have it in that order. Sydney again are coming off a bye and none of the teams below them did enough to leapfrog them. Are they the second best team in the competition? At this early stage of the season, it's subjective, so it's on exposed form, but they sit four and one. They've beaten the Demons. They lost to Richmond in a genuine upset, no doubt. They were challenged by West Coast, but at the same time, haven't faltered enough to drop down these rankings while Melbourne are obviously coming off a loss as well. Now, had Melbourne won, I might have, might have shifted that differently. And the same thing with GWS. They've kind of limped home in the last fortnight over Gold Coast and St. Kilda. But again, we're trying to make this evidence-based and they're still winning. And St. Kilda are a decent side who I think are still in the mix for finals for sure. So they haven't done enough to drop down these rankings. So let me know in the comments what you agree with and disagree with. I'm sure we're all going to take exception. This is really hard. Like it's very arbitrary. We're all rating teams differently. I'm sure I've made 
made you know a couple of flawed conclusions here but let me know somewhere where you think i got it genuinely wrong and uh you know i'll consider it and the reason i genuinely will consider it is because i'm going to do this ranking series you know throughout the season so let me know anything you agree with or disagree with but for now i look forward to your comments and i'll see you in the next video cheers